It is the average sentiment oscillator, traders. And uh, sentiment is the operative word in that phrase. And uh, you know we don't really mess with sentiment here. We don't care about other traders' emotions. It's just not something this channel's ever dealt with. Now, thankfully, this indicator, despite its title, isn't really a sentiment indicator. And also, thankfully, despite its name, we tested it anyway. And welcome everybody to the Indicator Profile Series for this Wednesday where we are profiling the ASO indicator, apparently. Uh, now this is something you have seen at least once before on this channel. It has a semi-unique look to it. Uh, but aesthetics aside, we care about the results. So let's go ahead and jump into today's episode. Before we do that, we have a lot of new people here. New people, please go away. Go back to the beginning. Go to nonsenseforex.com right here. This is a website with a great front page. Read that front page. Watch that first video and get caught up. This is not the place to ask people where to put your stop loss, how to read the ATR on the Japanese yen. No, no, go learn all of those things first and then come here. This is the advanced section of my channel. But as my traders can attest, it is worth getting to this point. Oh, is it ever. Now, for the rest of us, for the advanced traders, let's get into the specs for the average sentiment oscillator. This is going to be 2012 for the year. Uh, this has been coded and recoded, which is good news uh, because it means you can get it in MT4 and you can get it on TradingView possibly MT5. Check the blog for all of that. It's going to be a confirmation indicator. The, the subtype, you're going to see what I'm talking about. This is kind of the unique angle to this particular indicator, something you have certainly seen on this program before. And as always, you can make it whatever you want, but I would highly recommend that you keep it both-ish. Again, you'll see what I'm talking about. And for exits, uh, not my favorite, but again, that's all subjective. So let's go take a look at just what the heck I am talking about here. The average sentiment I'm sorry, the average sentiment oscillator looks like this. So what we have here is a combination, Pizza Hut and Taco Bell here, the uh, combination two lines cross indicator along with a, a zero cross, or I think, no, in this case it's a midline cross, it's a 50 line right here, but they all converge at the same spot. And so that is going to be your signal. I would more pay attention to the blue line when the blue line crosses and closes above the midline or when it crosses the magenta line, that is going to be your signal to go long. And then conversely, when it does the opposite, that will be your signal to go short. Uh, you could absolutely clean this up by getting rid of the magenta line if you wanted to. You could even get rid of the midline. Whatever makes it easier for you to read. Uh, personally, I would not have too many problems reading it this way and just leaving it alone. And when you're looking at this at first glance, like we've talked about before, you want to avoid these situations here that I call lips, where it crosses and then crosses the other way quickly. Thankfully, with this example, though, you don't have too many cases here. Um, this, this thing kind of keeps you in it. This right here is not a signal. This is not a cross. This is a bounce, just so you know. But then it finally did cross here and pretty much everywhere else. You might have had a little bit of traffic here. But you get the idea. But that's really all you need to know, in my opinion. If you ever want to know more, the blog is for that. And also, when I say how it's not really a sentiment indicator in the classic sense, the blog will explain that more, too. So let's go ahead and get into testing. Before we do that, understand the test might not have been ran today. Sometimes they were, sometimes they weren't. All that matters is how this indicator performs in your system. Don't get too excited about great results. Don't get too let down about poor results. And I have to say this because back in the day, people were going nuts about both. Wrong approach. Dumb, 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 dumb. Test it in your system. That's all that matters. But also understand, good news, we got you hooked up down below in the description. We're going to give you a link to my automation blog that shows how to test this yourself. There's an embedded video right in that blog that you need to watch. And as I've mentioned a few times already, you got to go see the blog always. That should be the very next place you go. The place you go after that is going to be on Dan Stone's YouTube channel to where you see a supplemental video to the video you're watching right now. If you like watching The Walking Dead and you want to watch The Talking Dead, then you go to Dan's channel right after this. You can see the indicator move in real time. You can get some extra details on it. 
all sorts of good stuff. And just like this video, his videos are not very long either. If you'd like to submit an indicator yourself that we may profile on this show, we've already done it a few times, we'll have an email address for you to, to go there and send it. And then, as always, a place where you can go download this indicator and every indicator we have ever done here on the Indicator Profile Series. So let's go ahead and see how we did with the average sentiment oscillator. Starting with the Euro USD. Hola! Como esta? Look at this. Look at this. Beautiful. Amazing. And this is all, this was all Dan, by the way. Those are his tweaks. I don't know. Some of you guys who spreadsheet these um, can tell me if this is the best result we've seen on the Euro USD here, especially when you consider the total amount of trades here. Um, sometimes you can get really high win loss ratios with you know like seven or eight trades, and they don't mean as much. But this is a meaningful amount of trades. It still might be a bit too low for some people. But when you trade 36 pairs and metals like I do, then that's something I can really work with. So I guess the example I was giving would be what you would see down here in the four hour. Uh, that is not exciting. You can pretty much skip over that in my opinion. This is tremendously exciting to me and many of you because I know the majority of you at the very least do trade the Forex market. And you do know that the Euro USD is never the best pair out there to trade. It's really never the worst. Yeah, but if you can do well here, chances are you can do really well in other pairs too. So we could just stop the video right here and this would be a huge win, but let's go ahead and keep going over to gold. Uh, strong, we've seen stronger, obviously. This is another one of those situations where you can get some really good ROI, even though you have a sub 50% win-loss ratio. We have also shown, what's, whatever the opposite of sub is, over 50% win-loss ratios uh, in gold. But this certainly isn't bad. I wouldn't be mad with you know a healthy 42 trades, you know a healthy 18 and three quarters ROI. You know, for all you gold and silver traders out there, I would absolutely test this out in your system. Let's go over to the S&P. Now, again, we have one of these situations that we've been seeing lately. You know, I don't even know how to explain this, really, but nothing to write home about on the daily. But on the four hour, it's been doing really, really well. I've said it before, not to overhype things because you have to take these things with a grain of salt, but people were lining up outside of Bernie Madoff's office because he was pulling this number, or close to it, every year instead of the benchmark 11%. We are giving this to you in one single indicator before you even start putting the other pieces in place. This is why I get so excited when I see good results on the S&P because of the potential of what could be once you finally put a real working algorithm together and what that could do for indices traders. Want to get a job on Wall Street one day? Want to get a job at a private firm? Show them you know how to trade these markets here. Watch what happens. And finishing it off with Bitcoin. Uh, strong, again, kind of like gold. We've certainly seen much stronger here. Not much else to say, really. Uh, low win-loss ratios on this one, which kind of surprises me, but strong ROI. For sure, on the daily. So for more hot fire just like this episode, subscribe, hit the bell. We have everything going on right now. We have the Trading Psychology Podcast every Monday. The single most important thing we do on this channel, if you're just messing around with indicators, you're wasting your time. Psychology is key. So make sure you're tuning into that Indicator Profile Series every Wednesday, blog every Thursday, and the 10-Minute Contrarian Investing Podcast every Saturday. We got you covered, traders. Don't miss a thing. Go get it.